You be careful who you go with and fall in love with. Be sure that he or she is God-fearing and loves Christ. The scripture says, be not unequally yoked together. How many of you have tried it and failed? There must be a spiritual oneness. There are three people that make up a marriage. The husband, the wife, and God. And be sure God is in your marriage. You see, so many are marrying someone with whom they have a very little chance of having a successful marriage. Seventeen magazine made a survey some time ago of young men and they asked the young men many questions and one of the questions was, what do you want your girlfriend to have on the first date? And the number one answer was a good figure. I would say the number one answer as far as I'm concerned would be to love the Lord with all her heart and all her mind. Many marry without being aware of the ideals and the goals which God has set for marriage. You see, God planned marriage for people with some maturity. Now, you can be mature when you're 17. You can be mature when you're 18, and you can be absolutely immature at 40. I see some little teenage 40-year-olds trotting around. And there are many of them. The scripture says, for this cause shall a man leave his father and his mother. You must be people who are ready to emotionally leave home. Now you think about that. We're always to love our parents. I don't care where you go to the ends of the earth. You're to love your parents. You're to confer with your parents. You're to honor your parents. You're to enjoy your parents. But when you get married, you must realize that they can never, that you can never again depend on them as you did when you were little children. Many parents ruin the marriage of their children by refusing to turn them loose. Learn when to turn them loose. For this cause shall a man leave, and his wife must be first, the husband must be first, while still honoring and loving and seeking the advice and the counsel of the parents. And the parents must learn how to turn loose. And when you turn them loose, I'm going to tell you something. When you turn them loose, they'll come back to you closer than ever as adults. And you'll enjoy them as much as you ever did. And then God wants marriages to be permanent until death do us part. Many people enter the marriage vow without any idea that this is for keeps. A young man at the marriage altar thinking to himself, if this doesn't work out, I'll get a divorce. Yes, tensions are going to come. There's going to be that adjustment period. And you keep adjusting the rest of your life. There'll be problems. There'll be disagreements. But you're to accept each other's faults. Your wife is not perfect and your husband is not perfect. You found that out after about two days. (laughs) That first morning you saw her in curlers. And that first morning when she saw saw you get up (laughs) bleary-eyed. And it's not always romantic. But we are to be together in a relationship that God has formed. We become one flesh. And many people that have been married for many years have loved each other so much and been together so much and know each other so well that they begin to look like each other. That's actually true. People tell me that I look like Ruth. If that's true, I'm getting mighty good looking. And I'll tell you, when I haven't seen her in two weeks, she looks better than ever. But there must be a lifetime commitment when you come to Christ. It's forever. 
Repeat it to yourself forever, 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 till death do us part. Don't ever entertain the idea of separation and divorce. If you know Christ, he can hold you together. There is no problem that you face that cannot be solved by the Lord Jesus Christ. And then God's ideal is for the husband and the wife to be faithful to each other. Faithful to each other. I read the other day that 70% in a survey, 70% of the men's it indicated were cheating on their wives. I just can't believe that statistic. I, I cannot allow myself to believe it. It didn't say how many wives cheated on their husbands. But I want to tell you, the Bible calls it adultery. And the Bible says that no adulterer will be in heaven. We don't realize what a vile and terrible thing it is to break the marriage vow with that type of a sin. I know it's old-fashioned. I know that's out of date. But that's the teaching of the Word of God, and the Word of God never, 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 never changes. It's the same. God hasn't changed in all these centuries. Do you think that God is changing His whole nature to accommodate Himself to your sins? No. He's the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. And the same God that hated the sins of Sodom and Gomorrah hate the sins that we're committing today in the countries of the world that I travel in because it's worldwide. To have an affair is said to put uh, spice in a marriage. I read that the other day in some newspaper. It's a sin against God and it breaks the marriage vow. And many of you are asking, well, what can I do to help my marriage? The first step is to turn your life over to Jesus Christ. Let him come into your life. You say, well, how do I do that? We've seen hundreds and even thousands here in Toronto come to Christ. Be willing to repent of your sins. That's the first step. Realize that God loves you. In spite of your sins, in spite of your failure, He loves you and He's willing to forgive you, but you must be willing to repent. And that word repent means to change. Change your mind. Change the direction of your life and determine that you're going to bring your life under the Lordship of Christ. If you failed in the home, if you failed at being a parent, if you failed at being a husband or a wife or an obedient child in the home, surrender your life to Christ tonight and let him come into your heart and help you to be the right kind of a husband or wife or the right kind of a child.